Okay, here we are with the cat kit. Um, this kit has safety eyes, which we haven't had in a kit yet, but safety eyes are easy. Uh, we start with color A, which is white, and I've pulled my yarn out of the center of the ball instead of pulling the free tail available because then it is a little easier to deal with. And we are starting with color A, which is white on the head. And um, I'm going to be doing a magic circle instead of the chain two. Um, so I'm just gonna bring my yarn over my finger like this, then go under this yarn, grab my working yarn, bring it under. Then I'm going to pinch these loops with this hand and then switch to this hand, chain one to secure. And um, I've noticed recently that if you rotate it so that you're working over both of these at the same time um, first instead of working in this direction, that it seems to be a little bit easier to tighten. So we're going to do six single crochet into the loop. So insert into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. And then again, insert into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn ever pull through both loops on the hook. That's two. We're going to do four more. Five. Six. Now it says place marker. So we're gonna place a marker in the stitch we just worked. And then I'm going to tighten this up. So I'm just going to pull this tail until we're all tightened up. This is our sixth stitch here. So counting from this way, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then this one is six. So this is the first stitch we're going to work into for our next round. And um, it doesn't say here necessarily to move the marker. So I don't know if that marker is to mark something or if it's just supposed to be because we're working in the round. Um, I would assume that it's just because we're working in the round, but I don't know that for sure. So I'm gonna grab another one to mark my spot for working in the round, just in case that one is to mark a position for later. So now we're gonna single crochet in each, single crochet two in each stitch around. So here's my first stitch here. I'm gonna go under both loops of that. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops of my hook, and then I'm going to place my stitch marker I like to place my stitch marker in the first stitch of the round. And again, I really do assume that that green one is for this purpose, but since it didn't say, I'm gonna leave it for now. And then into the same stitch, so under these same two loops again, we're gonna go back in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook, and we're gonna do that in each stitch around. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm done this row, and I've also looked over the pattern and this is your marker for your rounds. Normally it would say um, place marker and then at the end of each one it would say, you know, move marker or whatever. Um, it does not, but we're gonna use one in the first stitch of the round. Anyway, so next we have an increase row and we're gonna have a number of those. Um, the first one, we're going to be doing a pattern of one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch and repeating that pattern around. So I'm gonna do my first single crochet here and then move my stitch marker. Now I could leave this one in and just add a new one every time instead of moving this one but I'm not going to. Um, and then in this next one here we're going to do two single crochet. 
and then we're just gonna repeat that. So in this next one, one, and in this next one, two, all the way around. So I'll be back. Okay, so next we have another increased row and it's gonna be the same thing, but this time with two single crochets first. Um, so one single crochet in one stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then your increase. So that's our first single crochet stitch marker. Second single crochet, and then in the next, an increase, two single crochet into the same stitch. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so and also this is our right side that's facing us um, on top. This is our wrong side. This is, uh, this is the side that's going to be the outside. Um, so the next few rows are the same thing except you're going to do three single crochet and then the increase and then four single crochet and then the increase all the way around um, for each row. Uh, so I'm just going to you know because you've already seen how to do the the increments so i'm just gonna do both uh the next two rows and uh be back okay so here we are at the end of row six just encouraging this to curl back the other way i'm gonna do a, a stitch count so here we are two four six eight 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, and 36 is how many we want to have. I'm going to weave in my tail now, my starting tail. I like to wait until I have a little bit more of an area to work with. These are the safety eyes. Safety eyes are easy. And I'm just going to tie this down. I'm gonna tighten it. I'm gonna tie it down under a nearby stitch. So I'm gonna pull it tight. Then, okay, stop, stop doing that. I'm gonna just go under somewhere nearby. And I'm going to tie this, pull it tight. And then I'm just going to weave it under a couple Stitches the further secure it. Honestly, in this case, I really don't think that it's necessary, but we're just gonna do it because that's what we do. And then we'll just leave the tail in here by itself. Like so. And uh yeah. So uh the next thing we have is just a row where we're single crocheting and each stitch around. So that's just one single crochet in every stitch around, all 36. Um, and then we have another increase. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this row. Um, and then I'll, get, I'll demonstrate the increase again. And then... Um, do the next row which is another row of single crochet so i'll be back okay so here we are at the end of row seven we're going to start row eight which is a one single crochet in each of the next five so we're going to do our first one we're going to place our stitch marker so that's one two three four five and then an increase again, and we're just gonna repeat that pattern. So this is two single crochet into the same stitch, and we're just gonna repeat that pattern all the way around back to our stitch marker. And then the next row is going to be just another row of single crocheting in each stitch around, and the row after that is another increase row, just where we're doing single crochet in the next six, and then the increase, and then two rows of single crocheting in each stitch around. So I will probably just 
go through um, row 12 and then check in. Oh, there is a way that I like to count these sometimes um, to keep track. Um, so in this case, we're doing single crochet in the next five and then an increase. Um, sometimes I'll just think one, two, three, four, five, and then increase. But sometimes I will do one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, since it's a set of me making seven stitches. Um, I don't know which you will prefer, but, uh, that's a way that I like to count sometimes that I think makes it easier to keep track. So it's important not to forget to move your stitch marker with each row. Um, but I took mine out now to just say, say that you do. In a pattern like this, um, you know, if you forget to put your stitch marker in, you've gone a ways, you're probably going to have to take out, maybe take out some of your work, maybe not. Um, but with this one, with these sets of increases, if you look carefully, you can basically figure out sometimes where your the end of your last row is. So in this case, we are working this set of stitches and the row is ending on an increase. So here, I took my stitch marker out, right? And I've started this next row. But if you look closely, you can see where you have your increase. You can see where you have a double worked into one stitch. And actually you can see this little ridge here that shows it. And if you pull, you can see how I have two loops through there. That's one single crochet. And here I have four loops into one little pocket area. So if you've also lost count of your rows, which is another thing that can happen, um, there's a couple of ways you can tell that. One is then by looking back and counting your number of stitches between two of your um, increases. So in this case, I can see this increase here, right? And I can see this increase here. And I have one, two, three, four, five stitches in between. That'll give me a, a, an idea, you know, if you're just trying to figure out where you are, you lost your place or whatever, or maybe some of your work accidentally got pulled out and you're not sure where you are anymore. Um, and then also, when you're working in the round, you can count your rows. Um, this little center part is our round one, and then where we bump up here is where our round two starts. And so you can kind of follow that around. And I usually count kind of with that on the, I guess the bottom just from this way. So this is row one inside here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then here is where I've started nine. So in this case, um, I can just look back and I can see, well, here's my last increase from this row here. This is the first stitch of my ninth row and just put that back in where it belongs. Um, and that's just some stuff that was hard for me to figure out when I started. Um, that should hopefully help if you, if you have something happen where you unfortunately you forget your stitch marker or you lose lose where you are in your work. There's ways you can count to figure that out. Okay, so here we are at the end of row 12. We're getting kind of big here. And um, the next couple set of rows, it's going to be kind of the same thing, but with a big jump in how many stitches we're going to do. So our next one wants us to single crochet in the next 23 and then increase and then do that basically one more time. So um, if you have the right amount of stitches, you honestly only need to count for the first 23 and then the increase because then it'll be the last stitch will be your increase. So in this case, if you want, you can count out the 23 ahead of time and place a stitch marker in the stitch that's going to be the increase or you can just count as you go. 
Um, I'm just gonna count as I go. And the, I am doing this one a little bit, um, I guess kind of faster because I guess I'm not gonna count as I go if I'm gonna talk. But um, I have, I do have a video that's like basics of how to read a pattern, um, how to do single crochets, how to do half double crochets and stuff. And um, when the, the concept is the same for each row, I don't want to over explain um like with these increase rows it's the same skill same thing you're just counting one more before you do the increase so those ones i think and this is honestly probably unnecessary to demonstrate but just wanna i actually know i'm about i'm, I'm gonna go about halfway so i'll just kind of judge based on how far I've come and then I'll stop and count. I did do a, a stitch count while I was off the camera and came out where I need to be. Okay, let's see. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. That's 23, so okay, this is 24. So I'll just do another one into this one as my increase and then I should have I'll just double check but I should have 24 and then one more at the end so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 23 and then the last increase so I'll just do a single crochet in each of these um to the end and then an increase in that last one and then the next row is going to be another single crochet in each stitch around and then we'll have a couple more of these where we do the big number of crochets um and then the increase twice around um in a row and then we're gonna start with the decreases so i'm gonna finish out this row and then do the next row where i'm just single crocheting one in each stitch around and then I'll have one where I'm doing 24 single crochet and then an increase and then, you know, 24 and then an increase for the rest of that row. And then the next one will be 25 and then an increase. So this yarn seems to want to split a lot. Um, so I will do those, finish this row and do those three rows and then I'll be back for the decreases. Okay, so we are at the end of row 16, and um, this cat is going to be big. Like, this is going to be the head, right? And then we're going to have a body. It's going to be a big cat. I mean, I know it said like eight, eight and a half inches or something. I guess I didn't believe them. Uh, so anyway, I just did a stitch count. And I know I haven't said it yet in this video, I've said it in other ones, but when you're counting your stitches, each one of these sets of V's on top here is the top of one of your single crochets. So each one of these is a stitch. I count by twos because it is easier and faster. But, um, so we have the right amount of stitches and then we will start decreasing, decrease words for things like this are my favorite because they go, they go faster. Um, a decrease is the opposite of an increase. An increase is one, two single crochets worked into one single crochet. A decrease is one single crochet worked across two single crochets. So we are going to single crochet in the next seven. So. Put my stitch marker back. And then this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes I like to double check. Two, four, six, seven. Yes. Okay. So we're going to insert under the first stitch for our, our first decrease here. Yarn over, pull up a loop insert immediately under the next stitch yarn over 
pull up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on my hook, and that is a decrease. Now, with decreases more than other stitches, um, it can be confusing. You can think that the rest of your stitch, since it pulls that whole stitch to the side, that this is um, the stitch that you work into next. It is not. You can see how the loops come around that stitch. That's the one we just worked into. Um, so you're actually going to be working into this one over here. It's a little further away. And we're just going to continue um, this pattern of single crochet in the next seven stitches and then single crochet two together, which is also known as a decrease. So one, nope, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, and then decrease into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, and then working into over here. Now we're at another decrease, so like so, and we're gonna do that all the way around. And when you get to your last two stitches, you should be ending on a decrease. So I will finish out this row and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are at the end of the row. We're about to start our next row. And um, now we're gonna be basically just de decreasing um, in increments on our way down. So the next one will be to single crochet in the next six single crochet and then do a decrease and we're just gonna continue this. And actually this pattern is different than some of the other ones so far because, and once you take your stitch marker out, just don't lose your, your first stitch. I mean, you can work into it with the stitch marker still in there if you're a beginner because it helps. Um, like this is a really good example of how this will look like a stitch that you're supposed to work into here. Um, but I just did a decrease into that one. So here's our first stitch of the round. Um, because this, when we're done this, we're not just going to stuff it. We actually have some other um, things to make first. Like we have to make the little spot um, and put the eyes on. Um, before so it doesn't say at the end of this to stuff it like it has in the other patterns um, and then it says down at the instructions that you you do the spot and you do the eyes um, nose whiskers all that stuff and then you stuff the head so we're at three four five six and then I'm gonna do a decrease. Then six more single crochet. And another decrease. And we're just gonna keep stepping down like this. Don't let me lose count. I'm already one, two, three, four, five, six. Now just like the increases make this little um kind of to me visible little bump um little window because it's a just a larger opening there decreases have this diagonal look to them because you have this diagonal line here and this one's kind of slanted and they are thicker than the area surrounding them as well so here we have our two lines of a normal single crochet just coming in right and then here we do not have that. We have this kind of sideways look um, to these two lines here. And this is our, our decrease. So two, four, so yeah, six, seven, I'm gonna decrease. So we're just gonna keep stepping down. Um, the next one will be five, and then four, three, two, and then just every other. So I am going to turn this off for a bit and work out a couple of these rows. 
and then I will be back to process. Yeah, I want to see first. All right, I'll be back. So another thing that decreases uh, make it feel a little bit different is when you're doing your first single crochet after a decrease which this will be our first single crochet of the next row you're you're stretching a bit you know what I mean because you're you're all the way over here instead of being up over here like you would be normally so that feeling of like oh this if you aren't kind of monitoring your tension and you're just sort of letting the this pool kind of dictate how this goes you'll end up with a much looser single crochet um i haven't mentioned this before i didn't think to but when you're doing the first single crochet after a decrease you got to keep it pulled down and tight so that it pulls that back over and so you get a single crochet that's still the same size as the rest of your stitches so that's one two three four five and decrease so we're just gonna do five and a decrease all the way around okay so we're at row 20 row 20 is single crochet in the next four our first single crochet and I know I'm kind of overkill explaining this um, but you know erring on the side of demonstrating more I guess so four and then decrease now after this one I will just um, do them off camera until I get to the last round round 23 so I'll be back okay so I'm working on row 22 and first of all all this folding and stuff don't worry about it it'll um pop out with the filler um i just wanted to say just be careful as you're going that you don't miss a stitch or work into the same stitch more times than you're supposed to because of all the folding um i'm just straightening each piece as i go kind of like this so i just did a decrease so one two and then Kind of shifting it over and straighten it again decrease one two decrease straighten it out one two and i have my finger in between here to make sure that i'm not accidentally catching any of the threads from the other side and crocheting them in with what I'm doing so decrease and now we are to our split my yarn there a little bit last row and this one we are just alternating single crochet and a decrease so I'm going to do my first single crochet here and place my stitch marker and then we are just going to decrease then working in here single crochet then decrease and then here's our next stitch single crochet decrease it gets kind of harder to tell With a decrease so single crochet here decrease then single crochet here decrease then single crochet right here and then our last of the round decrease so we should have 12 stitches. So we got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
Okay, now we are going to fasten all. Um, so I'm just gonna slip stitch into the stitch here, insert under the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull that loop immediately through the loop on your hook. Tighten it down. And then I'm going to trim this end and it wants us to leave a tail for sewing. So presumably it's to sew the head to the body. So I'm just gonna take my yarn and this isn't an exact science, but I'm just kind of gonna loop it around this length and I'm gonna do it about three times just to make sure I'll have enough. And then I'll cut it and pull that out. Okay, normally this is where we would stuff um, the head, but in this case we actually have uh, to make another part, the spot, and put the eyes in and the face and stuff before we stuff. So that's gonna be the end of this one. Um, I'm getting kind of tired and faces aren't my forte and so I don't want to, you know, take away any of my not significant face making ability. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's the head and uh, we'll be back hopefully soon with um, making the other parts and the let's see the spot the ears are next and then body and legs i'm not sure if we'll wait to do the face assembly at the end or if we'll just do it after we make the spot um i'm thinking i'll probably do it after i make the spot because that seems like a good idea to me but yeah that's uh, the start of the cat hope this helps see you guys next time